heavy duty transportation sector is way behind. That's because batteries don't have enough juice to power trucks and ships. So researchers are turning to ammonia. It seems like the automotive industry is on a roll where we get to see and hear about the innovations pretty much every single day. In the same regard, Ford CEO Jim Farley has recently revealed about the company's next step towards innovative propulsion systems, which is the ammonia engine. So what's this news all about? How Ford is going to make sure of a development towards a sustainable and clean environment by introducing ammonia engines? How do these engines operate and what benefits and challenges do they have? Let's take a look at all of this in today's video. So without wasting time, let's get started. The rising global temperature on and above the Earth's surface is one of the most pressing challenges that we must address in the coming years. Our planet's climate is changing dramatically, primarily as a result of human activity and the transportation sector plays a substantial role in this global warming. Roads, as a vital component of transportation, bear a substantial responsibility for achieving emission reduction targets, and there is a need for immediate action to identify viable and effective alternative energy sources. Currently, mature alternative fuels for cars and other driving tools include compressed natural gas and liquefied petroleum gas, both of which are non-renewable energy sources that emit carbon. As a result, initiatives to reduce the effects of transportation on the Earth's atmosphere are currently being widely researched and investigated. Along with the electrification of the sector, producers and academics are investigating alternate and sophisticated fuels that, when analysed on a well-to-wheels basis, may provide an efficient approach to cut global CO2 emissions. Furthermore, the very unstable global political equilibrium makes it increasingly important to decouple the transportation sector from fossil fuels. In this context, carbon-free fuels derived from renewable sources are becoming increasingly strategic. For these reasons, hydrogen and ammonia as clean secondary energy products have gained popularity in recent decades. The introduction to ammonia. Ammonia is a versatile chemical that's made up of nitrogen and hydrogen. It's well recognized for its usage as a fertilizer in agriculture, but it's also frequently used as a base for chemical synthesis or as a molecule in a variety of activities. Ammonia has sparked interest in recent years due to its potential as a hydrogen carrier and a carbon-free fuel. Because of its extremely high hydrogen density, it is classified as a hydrogen carrier. Indeed, each mole contains 1.5 molecules of molecular hydrogen. The role of hydrogen in the transition to decarbonization of the transportation industry is widely understood. But there are some issues with hydrogen. Hydrogen storage continues to be a significant difficulty, restricting its direct use to vehicles. It must be stored as a liquid at 253 degrees Celsius or as a gas at 700 bar pressure. On the other hand, liquid ammonia can be stored at a suitable temperature of negative 33 degrees Celsius at ordinary pressure and 20 degrees Celsius at 9 bar. This greatly simplifies the storage and transportation of this energy carrier. The synthesis of hydrogen from ammonia has received a lot of attention. Thermal decomposition or catalytic breaking of ammonia into nitrogen and hydrogen followed by electrolysis or electro-oxidation can yield it. Ammonia decomposition is a slow reaction that requires a lot of energy, hence metal catalysts are frequently used to boost hydrogen production. Much effort has gone into designing suitable catalysts for this purpose. Because it's extremely active, low available ruthenium is commonly accepted as the ideal catalyst for breakdown at 400 degrees Celsius. At 600 degrees Celsius, the widely available and less priced nickel-based catalysts work comparably. To ensure that the energy losses from the ammonia breakdown reaction are close to the theoretical minimum value of around 7% of the energy contained in the ammonia molecule, more cost reductions and optimization of the catalyst and reaction processes will be necessary. Furthermore, ammonia can be utilized directly as a fuel in combustion systems, particularly internal combustion engines, which different companies like Ford are already working upon. This shows much devotion and dedication of the company towards the role of developing a cleaner environment. So, how is ammonia produced? The principal process for producing ammonia is the Haber-Bosch reaction, which occurs in the presence of catalysts at a pressure of 280 M and a temperature of 400 to 450 degrees Celsius. Suitable catalysts are based on osmium, ruthenium, uranium and iron, while iron is the most commonly employed, with a catalyst being prepared from magnetite. 
The HP process is a closed loop process that separates ammonia from the product stream through chilling and additional condensation. The unreacted synthesis gas is then combined with fresh feed and returned to the ammonia synthesis reactor. But is utilizing ammonia challenging? The use of ammonia as a fuel still presents a number of obstacles, both in terms of process optimization and energy efficiency, and in terms of combustion in internal combustion engines. The primary technology hurdle with this fuel is that some changes to IC engines are required for operation on ammonia. More specifically, fuel storage space is often bigger and some material selection adjustments are required. Furthermore, larger compression ratios are required, which typically necessitates dual fuel injection, for example, ammonia plus diesel, ammonia plus hydrogen, to maintain a reasonable compression ratio. Dual fuel applications have also been studied in order to improve flame stability and balance CO and NOx emissions. The second issue that ammonia faces as a fuel is NOx emissions. Understanding the mode of operation of an engine is critical for reducing NOx and unburned ammonia in exhaust gas. Some studies, for example, have found NOx emissions surpassing 1000 ppm when engines run on ammonia. With engine design and systematic tuning, these high NOx emissions can greatly be decreased according to research. As this technology advances, proper engine tuning will be critical in order to suitably size downstream selective catalytic reduction units required to remove NOx from the gases that enter the combustion chamber. But there are some solutions to address these problems. To solve the challenging ammonia ignition problem, it is customary to blend ammonia with traditional fuels used in internal combustion engines, such as gasoline, diesel, LPG, CNG, ethanol, methanol, hydrogen and so on. Ammonia can be introduced into the engine either as a gas from the air intake manifold or as a liquid into the cylinder separately from the accompanying fuel. Because traditional fuels burn at a lower temperature, it raises the temperature of the cylinder and aids in the ignition of ammonia. A supercharger can be incorporated into the engine to improve the combustion processes and power output. Because of the high octane rating of ammonia, the engine can be supercharged more aggressively than standard engines. Higher compression ratios can also aid in the resolution of challenging ignition problems. If you're liking this video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now back to the video. How Jim Farley's announcement has made an impact. There is no doubt about the fact that Jim Farley's announcement did more than just the introduction of this great engine technology. It reflected Ford's vision for a cleaner and sustainable future, demonstrating their commitment to innovation. Ford has a rich history of pioneering automotive technologies, from the assembly line introduced by Henry Ford to the recent push towards electric vehicles. And now the ammonia engine, as envisioned by Farley and his team, seems to be the next big achievement for the company itself. Under Farley's leadership, Ford appears to be looking beyond the horizon, ready to embrace solutions that others might not give much attention to. This commitment can be seen not only in the research and development efforts, but also in the strategic partnerships and investment in clean energy infrastructure. Ammonia, like hydrogen, has enormous potential as a zero carbon emissions alternative to fossil fuels. And it looks like Ford is on the go to make this happen by introducing an engine that is powered by this gas, though there are some challenges which cannot be ignored. But with the evolution and development of the latest technology, it looks like these issues will be resolved in the near future. Regardless of which way things go, analysts anticipate a rapid expansion of the green ammonia market. The proposed concept will enable cost-effective net-zero growth in a variety of industries including automotive, marine, aviation and power industries, engine and propulsion system suppliers and renewable energy and fuel industries by converting from conventional hydrocarbon fuels to carbon-free hydrogen and ammonia fuels. What are your thoughts on this though? Put in the comments below. If you enjoyed watching this video then hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.